अंतकरण इंद्रियस इज लाइक ग्रोस सेंस आईज नोज इयर टंग स्किन हैंड्स फीट एटसेट्रा दीज आर कॉल ग्रोस सेंस दैट यू कैन सी एंड हाउ टू कंट्रोल देम इज वन क्वेश्चन अंतकरण मीन्स इनर सेंसेस अंत मीन्स इनर करण मीन्स द means of action just like hand is external means of action the inner means of actions are the mind the intellect chitta ego our crude nature all these things are called inner faculties so indriya means outer senses antahkaran means inner senses yeah <coughs> so now swamina bhagwan is asking a question about those who have already come into the satsang those who have already found this group or satsang and those who have started liking the satsang that yes i like it i enjoy it etc but still the foundation is not solid foundation is not firm because there is back and forth thoughts going in the mind i like satsang but i like the other things too i like nice talks and things here but i like outside worldly talks also satsang ma apde aavya satsang malyo pan satsang ma aavya pachi pan apno payo pakko na thayo hoy पायो पाको केम ना कहवा के तो सत्संग में आए तो सत्संग गमे बहार जाइए तो बहार न गमे दुनिया गमे कोई झगड़वा गमे कोई निंदा करवा गमे कोई कहीं कूथली करवा गमे पाचा सत्संग में आए तरह एम कह आ तो बधु खोटू न करव जो एट पाचो अंदर बीजो विचार आए कि आ बधु शू करव शू ना करव एवं गड़बड़ गोटाड़ो भूसू थी जाए खीचड़ो थी जाए पेम जेम सत्संग जाए तम जगतन बधु गमत ओछू थत जाए जगतनी बातों में अपन रस ओछो पड़त जाए लग्न में भी गया है तो भी गपसप मरवाने बदले कोई सत्संग बात काढ़ीए कोई ना समाचार पूछिए कोई तबियत सारी ना हो प्रेयर करिए तो आप लग्न आखा वाइब्रेशन में फेर पड़ी जाए आखू वाइब्रेशन बदलाई जाए नहीं तो लग्न में बदा में हजार जन ने बोलाव्या हो एक जन ना आयो होना दुखी थी जाए केम नहीं आयो अरे भाई पर बीजा हजार आया से तो जो एन आनंद लो पड़ी एक प्रकृति लग्न में नहीं एवं कहवा कि जैन धर्म न पेलू उजवे बधु पच्चीस के बधु ए बदा ने बोलावे बोलावे बदा ने सरस आनंद करावे तो वक्त बदा आया है ना जो कौन नहीं आ मैं बोला आया था क्या मजू नहीं आया एना दुखे दुखी थी जाए अरे भाई आटलू तप करू आटलू व्रत करू तो आप शीखवा तो रही गय के आनंद करो भाई आनंद करो है पर खोतरी ने अपने दुख ऊभा करे जाइ दुख ऊभा करे सो स्वामनारायण भगवान इज टॉकिंग अबाउट देट हाउ अवर फाउंडेशन केन बी फर्म 
and the proof of foundation to be firm is like Sears Tower, you know. How many stories high? 110 story or more. And that tall building, niche foundation na hoy. If there is no good foundation at the ground level, would fall down. We had seen on that sandy, so many homes on the ocean side, they totally flipped because of the wind, they flipped because the foundation was not strong. And they say that they drive the steel columns, they call piles, you know, for this year's foundation. They hammer and hammer and hammer all the way up to the rock bottom. When the earth, dirt disappears and the rock floor comes, up to that depth they go there, you know, and then start building on top of that, you know. <coughs> there are structural engineers, you know, they do all that design, you know, to make sure that foundation is firm, you know, otherwise building can become a dangerous. So, yes. Tari mummy pehla tu bhajan shikhi gai. So, the foundation has to be firm in order to build a tall building. Same way in our satsang also, we should have a sound foundation so that in the future, all the disturbance, all these negativities, anything comes, we don't fall down, we don't get any shake up, you know. And Swamnath Bhagavan is asking the question, you know, that how do we know that somebody's foundation is strong? Or how do we know that somebody's foundation is not strong? That is the simple question. We are all gathered here, right? And we all think, you know, that yes, my foundation is strong. Elena Ben. My foundation is strong. Yeah. So Samdhan Bhagavan is asking answering that question, you know. That if we have a hundred percent style to accept the good qualities from everybody. Maybe hundred and ten percent style to accept the good qualities from everybody, no matter how good or bad the world will say. Then that person has a strong foundation. And Samdhan Bhagavan gave an example of the Tatrai. In Srimad Bhagavat, there is a sage by the name Datta. And given by a sage called Atreya. His father was Atri, Rushi, Atreya. So, the name was combined as Datta Atreya, given by Atreya. So, Datta Atreya. But in there, a similar word, Traya, comes, you know, Datta Traya. So, they started putting three heads on the God. <laughs> He did not have three heads, you know. 
but that's how people perceive and worship, you know. Wherever you see the God Dattatre, you know, there are three heads, you know. Lord Brahma also has four heads, but in picture you can see only three. Because one, two, three, and the four in the back you do not see, right? Dattatre also has one, two, and three heads, but not four, you know, they say three. <laughs> so a difference between Brahma and Dattatre is one with three and one with four. <laughs> so Sri Maharaj says that the Tatray took the positivity from everything that he came in touch with, contact with. Five elements, Prithvi, the earth, Jard, the water, Tej, the light, Vayu, the air, Akash, the ether sky. From these five elements also he took positive from each. Hmm. From the earth, Prithvi, he took so positive that because of the earth we can walk and we can build houses, we can have trees, we can have all these plantations and everything. So Prithvi Tattva is very essential. The earth part or the solid part, you know, is very essential. And then there is a story, you know. <coughs> that it's a long story. I'll start from the beginning. Lord Shiva and Parvati ji. Hmm? <coughs> they were residing in their palace, you know, in the northern part of India, in Kailash Parvat. And Parvati had a lot of love and affection towards Lord Shiva. In Bhagavat also, it is said that Many times Parvati had died, you know, and born again, and again stayed and married with Lord Shiva, you know. She killed herself in the yagna by her fathers, Daksh Prajapati's yagna also, and then became again Parvati and came back, you know. So one day they were sitting. And Parvati curiously asked that, what kind of garland do you have on your neck? Normally, we put flowers, garland, right? Nice flowers, rose or lotus. You know what kind of garland Lord Shiva had? Skulls. Human skulls. Khopri badi, khopri yoni marati. So Lord Shiva smiled. And when Lord Shiva smiles, curiosity, curiosity goes up, you know. Why did you smile? You did not answer my question. Why did you smile? So Lord Shiva says, well, it's not worth knowing, you know. She says, no, now I have to know. <laughs> because you said it's not worth knowing, so now I have to And then she insisted, you know, that I have to know. Otherwise, no cooking. No food. <laughs> Lord Shiva says that in the previous births, whenever you died, I loved you so much that I take your skull and collect here. You know, this is the collection of your previous births, you know. She got shocked. She says, wow. <laughs> Those many times I have taken the births. <laughs> so she says, that, then what did you do all this time? He says, Lord Shiva says, I am eternal. You know, 
I am just like just me, you know. So she says that when would this end, you know? Can I become like you also eternal? <laughs> Lord Shiva says, yeah. So how do I become eternal? So he says, you have to know the knowledge of Brahma Vidya. You have to know the knowledge of eternity. She says, okay, then teach me. So Lord Shiva says, it is very sacred. And if it goes to the wrong party, you know, it could create problem. So she says, what do I have to do? So he says, you don't have to do anything. I have to do something. And then he took the horn that he had and blew it with so powerful sound that all those birds and insects and animals who were there, they went into trance. They became unconscious. So he prepared the background, you know, that nobody else can listen that. Then everything was quiet and everything was, you know, very appropriate. So the Lord Shiva, with the closing I started giving the knowledge. How to become oneself elevated to the level four, the Brahmic consciousness. Or maybe two and four level. What do we talk about? <coughs> so, Parvatiji was listening. Shiva was talking. And it became very high level of talk. So Parvati ji started dozing. <laughs> she could not pay attention. And she started feeling sleepy and started dozing. So with the closed eyes, Lord Shiva says, are you listening? And guess what? It was a silence. Lord Shiva, was, Lord Shiva was expecting that, yes, go ahead, or something like that, but there was a silence. So, there was a little parrot baby who was just born when he blew the horn. Oh, Jesam Narayan. Ayagarbi So the little baby of parrot was listening all this thing what Shiva was telling. More attentively than Parvati ji. <laughs> now we can say who is more serious, right? <laughs> this parrot had gained enough knowledge by listening only the 80% or so discourse, realize that I am a soul, I am not a body, and says that if this stops right here, the remaining will not be completed because Parvati is sleeping. So that parrot copied Parvati ji and said, I am awake. <laughs> You know, our young Moti Bennett, young people, who are there, they say, "Jeje, say, say." Nice parrot, you know, is copying everything, you know. Even the telephone ring, you know, it copies that as if the phone is ringing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so the answer came to Shiva, Lord Shiva, that yes, I am awake, but the distance was far away. It came from the distance. And Lord Shiva opened up the eyes. Who is listening? And here he sees Parvati ji, you know, <laughs> nice in sleep. <laughs> he said, Devi, you are not paying attention. This is important. You wanted to have eternal life. And what kind of seriousness you have. And she woke up, you know. Sorry, sorry. It was so deep and so enjoying. I just... Went to trance. Lord Shiva picked up his weapon. 
Trishud and saw that parrot baby curiously waiting to listen more, you know. And here, boom, he throws at that parrot baby to kill. But that parrot baby had enough knowledge now, left the physical body and flew with the consciousness of soul. And here is the, the, this weapon is behind him and that baby is going at a faster speed, you know. It went all the world, all everywhere in the world to find a place for a shelter. But nobody can give a shelter. You know, this is a powerful weapon of Lord Shiva, Trishud. Hmm? I have heard, you know, that somewhere Trishud has been used, you know. Hmm? Some years ago, in Manav Seva Mandir, There used to be a politics between election of two parties, you know. And they had a hot discussion. And they got into the fighting. Just to who becomes the president of that society. Manasura Mandir. One lady ran to Lord Shiva and picked up this weapon. <laughs> and came out to hit somebody, you know. <laughs> so when I heard that, I was just remembering, you know, about this, that Lord Shiva had thrown, but here his devotees are using it, you know. <laughs> but anyhow, that parrot baby gone, went all around and all around and everywhere, you know, could not find any place to hide. Hello. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, very smart parrot baby, you know. She went to the ashram of Vyas Bhagwan, the one who wrote all the scriptures, you know, Mahabharat and Vedas and Purans and everything. And his wife was pregnant about three, four months pregnancy. This soul entered into the baby's body inside Vyas Bhagavan's wife. Now that Trishur cannot come and hurt the sage's wife and the baby inside, so it was programmed to go back, so he went back. <laughs> so now this baby is growing. After nine months, normally baby is delivered. It became 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. And mother is getting impatient that when this would happen. So Vyas Bhagwan knew who was that baby, you know, who was that soul. So he requested that soul that please... Be merciful to your mother and get delivered. That baby says, I have so much fear outside, I do not want to come out. <laughs> I don't know whether that weapon will come back. <laughs> so Vyas Bhagwan says, well, I'll pray to Lord Shiva, you know. That's all I can say. So at the age of six, he was born. That is what the scripture says. For six years. When he was born, he started walking. And the news came, so Vyas Bhagavan was taking the bath in the river. And the news came that you have a very bright son born. And the moment he was born, he walked and he has left the house. Vyas Bhagwan, being such an elevated soul, still had inner desire to see his son. So he gave up or finished up quickly, came home and found out that the baby is gone. So he started searching 
for that boy that I want to see one more one time at least before that baby goes to the j- uh, jungle and does meditation and renounces or whatever you know but I want to see at least one time you know right Parikshit at least yeah. if Varni walks away you know <laughs> <laughs> So, he went to the jungle and he cannot find. On passing the roadway, there was a nice lake that the angels were taking the bath there, you know. And they were taking the bath naked. Vyas Bhagavan saw that Another thought came in his mind and thought became so powerful saying that maybe they would know that if my son has passed through here. So, taking that excuse, he went to ask them. And those ladies put on the clothes. And then he said, did you see my son going through here? He says, yeah. He has gone this roadway. So, he had a question that when I came, you put on the clothes. And my, when my son was going, I'm sure you did not put on the clothes. And they said, yes. And they said, why? I'm a sage. And they said that, yes, you are sage, but you have still a thought of man and woman. He did not have that thought. He was beyond that thought. So he realized that my son is elevated, you know, than me. But he cannot find, you know, he just wandered and wandered, he cannot find, you know. So finally he decided that, okay, I want to use my power now. So he sat down, meditated, and entered in every living being, you know. He entered himself into every living being, and pose a question that, my son, where are you? So now this is the yogic phenomena, you know. This is the yogic procedure that he used. Sukadevji, he was far away. He got that message also. That my father is after me, looking for me, searching for me. And I have a choice to answer or not to answer. But he says, if I don't answer, then I am insulting this yogic power, you know. I am not, you know, following the yogic power's instructions. So I, should, I have to answer, you know. So Sukadevji from there reversed the mode and he entered in everywhere from his soul consciousness. And said, where am I not? His father was saying, where are you? And Sukhdev Ji says, where am I? I am everywhere. (laughs) So father got that answer. But he knew from which latitude and longitude that came from. Boom, he went there, you know. And he saw his son there, you know. And his son says that, I have enough knowledge. I don't have any need and attraction towards the world. I am renounced. And please don't, you know, bother me more. You have seen me, now you go back. And Vyas says, okay. I had my wish fulfilled, you know. I wanted to see you once, that's all. But as a father, I have adapt to guide you. I have a duty to guide you. And he says, okay, what is that duty? He says that you have not received the full knowledge. You have received only 70-80% when Lord Shiva was telling you. There is 30% still left. You have to finish that. And the only person in this world who can give you the remaining 30% is the King Janak. Janak Raja. So, it's my advice that you go there and finish your 30%. Sukhdev Ji says, I am a sage. 
Janak is a king and how would he give me this remaining knowledge? Vyas Bhagavan says, he is above you and me both. He is very mature, you know. Even though he is king, he has this knowledge. And you go and then if you find out that it is not enough, let me know. But at least you take my advice, you know, you go. So he said, okay, I'll take your advice and I'll go. So he goes to the palace of Janak. And there he learns the remaining 30%, you know. And when he is done learning, you know, then he says that, okay, now I can go. So he is asking King Janak, can I have the permission to leave? And Janak says, there is no bondage, there is no tie. You are free to go anytime you want to. You are free to stay if you want to, you know. So then Sukhdevji says that there is a system. Whoever you learn from, you have to pay some gratitude. Dakshina. But I don't have anything, you know. I am saint all sage also, you know. But it's my duty to ask you for anything you need that I can fulfill your desire, then the chapter will be over. So Janak Raja smiles and says that, you know, I have everything. I have all these amenities. I have all this maturity. So it's okay if you don't give me anything. And you can go. Sukhdev Ji says, no, but then it is unfulfilled chapter that I did not give you anything. And he says, I want to go to the pilgrimage of whole India. And when I come back, I can bring whatever you ask me, you know, I'll bring it. So Janak Raja says that if you insist so much, then wherever you go, find something which has no use at all and bring that thing to me. Find something which is totally useless and bring that to me. So he said, hey, that's easy. Right? <laughs> So he started going around and he started thinking also that I have to get something which is useless. So on the way he saw a cow dung, the excrete from the cow, smelling, a lot of flies on that and he stopped and he said, yeah, maybe this is useless, even though it smells. But maybe I should take this one, you know, and on my way back, I'll give it to him. Moment he bends down, you know, that cow dung, the vibration comes. Wait a minute, I am not useless. I am the recycled food. Hmm. When somebody is... items. It is called mistan. Mistan, right? You know, nice rotli and shark and all that. To wish excrete, you know. Nobody wants to touch. Nobody wants to see. Who did all that to me, you know? I was a nice food. I was a nice food. Who did all that to me, you know? You answer me. And he did not have a nice answer, you know. Then it says that even though I am like this, the farmers take back to the farm and puts into the farm. A nice crop comes out from me. So, I am not useless. He says, okay, I'm sorry. 
Then he walks further. And unknowingly, he hit the rock on his leg, on his foot, and he stopped. And he started bleeding on his toe. And he said, maybe this is useless. You know. So he started picking up that rock. And the rock says, wait a minute. I'm not useless. <laughs> People carve the idol of God out of me. Hmm? Put into the temple and worship. How can you say I'm useless? <laughs> so he threw that back also. And then goes around and around and around. So what I was saying, you know, that this reference that Swaminarayan Bhagwan is also saying, Panchbhut, the earth part of that, Prusvi Tattva, in there also, the Tatrai Bhagwan ne, Prusvi Tattva ne paan, yano gunali dosh, Panch Mahabhut no paan, yano gunali dosh. He has taken the positive from the rock and earth also, you know. And that is the reason Swaminarayan Bhagavan is using that as an example. Hmm. He made 24 Guru, you know, the Tatari Bhagavan. Hmm. And he made 24 different entities as the source of inspiration for him. So he is considered very famous in our scriptures, you know, that he took always positive from anything that he would come in touch in, in the contact, you know. So this is what Swaminarayan Bhagavan is saying, you know. The Dattatray accepted five elements, the moon, the animals, the prostitute, the young woman, etc., and took the positive out of all of them. Similarly, whoever has the quality of accepting the good qualities from a saint would have a found, firm foundation in this satsang. So there is one thing. And then the Bhagavan is saying that Jene Santamo Gun Lidana Sobhav Nahoi, the Satsangmo Rayo Chetopan and the Payo Drud, Nathi Satsangmo Reva Chatopan and Opayo, Shaki Kevai, Kare Gabri Pade, Kare Ogun Levana Chaluthai, and a Satsangmathi, Chutothija and Ukasu, Kevaini. So the one who remains in the Satsang but starts taking negative of the saint would not have a sound foundation in the satsang. That was a great answer that Swaminarayan Bhagavan gave, you know. Eh? Then Swaminarayan Bhagavan asked another question. Can the Indriyas and the Antahkaran be completely controlled by the company of the Sant, by reading the scriptures and by applying one's own thought process. Three things you know give. Our outer senses and inner senses, can that be controlled completely by the company of a Sant, Saint, or by reading the scriptures? and by applying one's own thought process. Hmm? Sriji Maharaja Prashna Pucho, Sant, Tatha Sastra, Tatha Potano Vichar, E Trane Hoi, Tare Atisha Indriyo Antahkaran Jitai, Kemothi Ek Vanu Hoito Pan Jitai. You need all three to win over Extremely 
win over our senses and inner senses. Samnar Bhagwan is using word atishai. <laughs> so, can we totally hundred percent win our senses, or can one thing be enough to win the senses, inner senses and outer senses? And then God is saying. If you say that all three must be present, then what technique should be learned from the sant? What technique should be learned from the scriptures? And how should one apply one's own thought process? Please explain. So not only just you say one, two or three, but you have to explain why one, two and three. And again, Paramahamsas were unable to answer. Then Sri Ji Maharaj explained, from the scriptures, one should realize the greatness of God and His Son. From the scriptures, one should realize the greatness of God and His Son. In worldly affair, if we know the greatness of a hundred dollars bill over one dollar bill, which one we would select? We have two bills, one one dollar, one hundred dollar. Anwaji, hundred dollars, right? If you have one hundred dollar bill in one hand and a well-known diamond of the whole world, do you know what is the name? Kohinoor, Kohinoor diamond. From India, now it is in England, you know. <laughs> so if one gives you hundred dollars bill, and say here is well-known diamond, take one diamond, right? So we have worldly value of the worldly things, right? And then I was reading one story about one beggar. He was begging every day in India. So one rich guy, he was passing by and a thought came to his mind that I want to get rid of this guy's poverty. And he, this, this beggar was blind, you know. He had no eyes, you know. So this rich guy gave a diamond from his ring. Very valuable diamond. Very valuable, you know. And told that beggar that now onward, please don't go for begging. He says, how come? He says, I'm giving you this very valuable diamond. And you don't have to beg. So he was very happy. He did not know how diamond looks, tastes, feels. So he came to his home, sitting in the chair, you know, in a very joyful his neighbor, who was also a beggar, right? The neighbor of a beggar has to be beggar, right? <laughs> Most probably. <laughs> and he, he was okay, you know, he can see the things. And he get, went to the towns and he brought few things, you know, from his begging. And he saw this man relaxing and enjoying in this chair, you know, so he said, he must have been something happy, you know. So he asked, what happened today? Why are you so happy? He says, why can I not be happy, you know? I don't have to go for begging anymore. And he says, come on now, begging is a good fun, you know. Why are you saying no, you know? <laughs> and he says, look, I got a diamond. And the person who gave me the diamond says that it is very valuable worth over hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know. And you don't have to go for begging. That neighbor beggar never had seen diamond, you know. He was only seeing things which comes in his plate, you know, food. And rarely he gets some sweets like goar, you know, the sugar cane, you know, powder, you know. And today he had sugar cane powder in his begging, you know. 
So, he says that, show me the diamond. So, he got inside, got the diamond, showed him. So, he tested. And somehow, it was very bad in test. Normally, what they do is they coat sometimes within the diamond a little spot of poison that in the time of aggression, if somebody attacks, then they can suck that diamond so they would die, you know. But it is covered, you know. They have to remove the cap, you know. So there must be some small trace left or whatever and he tested and he just spit it out, you know, saying that, you know, what is this, you know, this is not a diamond, you know, this is a piece of rock or glass, you know. So that old man said, no, 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 but he has said, you know, that this has to be a very valuable diamond. So out of his knowledge, he says, look, I have this piece of sweet, you know, gore. You taste it. So he gave that and he tested and he says, yeah, this is sweet. And now he says, you test this diamond. He gave that diamond and it was again bad test. You know, he threw it away also. Then he says that now we want to make sure that this diamond is not in anybody's possession. We will throw into the lake. So they went and threw it into the lake. So one year later, this guy goes every day again begging, you know. This rich man was passing by and he saw the same guy. And he was surprised. He says, how come? I made him rich, you know, and how come he's still begging, you know? So he approached that and says that, I gave you that diamond. Why are you still begging? So he says, you are the same guy a year ago who came to me and gave me that uh, junk. He said, it was not junk. He said, yeah, it was junk, you know. It tasted so bad, you know, we threw it away into the lake. <laughs> if you are pleasing with me, give me one rupee. I'll be happy. One dollar. <laughs> so that guy gave one dollar and asked him where in the lake you had done that. He says, my neighbor knows. He took the neighbor and then he cleaned up and collected that diamond back again. And he said that he is not worth, you know, for this diamond. Hmm. So here also, Swamdhan Bhagavan is saying you know, hmm, that if we know the value of the satsang as a diamond, then we will not see the negative of saint or a god. So, Bhagavan is saying that if one's vision should be kept fixed, okay. So, from scripture, one should realize the greatness of God and his saints. From the saint, one should learn techniques for controlling the indriyas, our senses. What is the technique? Such as, one's vision should be kept fixed on the nose in this manner. Those who meditate, they meditate only up to the distance that they see their nose only, you know. And that's how far they see, you know. They don't want to see any further. Gunatitanan Swami was of that type. He would never see beyond his nose, you know. Yogiji Maharaj was that way also, you know. And that is the technique that you learn from the saint. Once vision should be kept fixed, on the nose, in this manner. And one should not listen to worldly talks. One should not listen to the worldly negative talks. These and other techniques should be learned from the Sant. So, Bhagavan is saying that these kind of techniques and other techniques should be learned from the Sant. By one's own process of thought, so there are two things Bhagavan said. One from the saint. Second one from the scriptures. Now third one from one's own thought and process. By one's own thought process, one should look upon the techniques taught by the saint positively as being for one's own liberation. So, 
from the saint whatever techniques are given for our own, our own liberation to be positive those are the things we should learn then one should behave accordingly ane je sante shikhvi je yukti tene potane vichare karine potana kalyan ne arthe savdi samjhine manvi je kai sante apanne shikhvadyu hoy e સવડું સમજીને માનવું સવડું એટલે આપણાથી ના વર્તાતું હોય કે આ અમને તો મને કહેવાની ખબર જ નથી પડતી કે મારાથી આવું થાય કે ના થાય મારાથી આટલું પડાતું નથી શું કરવા કહેતા હશે મને એવો વિચાર નહીં કરવાનો પણ સવડો વિચાર કે મને કહ્યું છે તો મારે પાડવું જ છે મારાથી ના પડાય તો પણ પાડવું જ છે અને એવું વર્તવા લાગવું વી હેવ વન હેઝ ટુ સ્ટાર્ટ પ્રેક્ટિસિંગ દેટ વે આમ ત્રણેય વાનોએ કરીને ઇન્દ્રિયો અંતઃકરણ જીતાય છે સો એ સંત વેન હી સેઝ પોઝિટિવલી દેન વન શુડ બિહેવ એકોર્ડિંગલી ઇન ધીસ વે ધી ઇન્દ્રિયઝ એન્ડ અંતઃકરણ કેન બી ઓવરકમ બાય ધીઝ થ્રી મીન્સ બાય ધીઝ થ્રી ટેકનિક્સ વન કેન કંટ્રોલ વન્સ ઓન સેન્સીસ એન્ડ ઇનર સેન્સીસ so far anybody has any question before we go further kone ke puchu satla atli baat thi ema okay then sri ji maharaj posed another question is antahkaran controlled by controlling the indriyas or the indriyas controlled by controlling the antahkaran શ્રીજી મહારાજે બીજો પ્રશ્ન પૂછ્યો કે ઇન્દ્રિયોને જીતે અંતઃકરણ જીતાય છે કે અંતઃકરણને જીતે ઇન્દ્રિયો જીતાય છે આપણે તો ગુજરાતીમાં પેલા ઇંગ્લિશમાં કહેવાય છે ને વીચ કમ્સ ફર્સ્ટ ચિકન ઓર ધી એગ શું જીતવાથી શું જીતાય ઇન્દ્રિયો જીતો તો અંતઃકરણ જીતાય તે અંતઃકરણ જીતો તો ઇન્દ્રિયો જીતાય હે શું વટ ઇન્દ્રિય ઓકે યુ ગેવ ફિફ્ટી પોઈન્ટ્સ ઓકે લેસન ટુ ધીસ so then god answers no pehla i'll read in gujarati first ha ye prashna no uttar pan paramhans ne na thayo na avdyo tare sri ji maharaj e karyo bahya indriyo ne deh damane karine jite bahya indriyo ne deh damane karine jite અને દેહ દમને કરીને બાહ્ય ઇન્દ્રિયો જીતાણી હોય તો પણ પંચ વર્તમાનના નિયમમાં દ્રઢ થઈને રહેતો હોય તો બાહ્ય ઇન્દ્રિયો જીતવે કરીને અંતઃકરણ જીતાય પણ એકલે અંતઃકરણને જીતવે કરીને બાહ્ય ઇન્દ્રિયો જીતાય નહીં અને બાહ્ય ઇન્દ્રિયોને જીતવે કરીને તો અંતઃકરણ જીતાય છે કેમ જે જો બાહ્ય ઇન્દ્રિયોને જીતે અને વિષયમાં પ્રવર્તવા દે નહીં ત્યારે અંતઃકરણ મોહેલી કોરેથી નિરાશ થઈ જાય છે કે આ દેહે કરીને આ વાત બનવાની નથી સો સિન્સ ધી પરમહંસાઝ કુડ નોટ એન્સર દેટ ક્વેશ્ચન શ્રીજી મહારાજ રિપ્લાયડ ઇફ એ પર્સન કંટ્રોલ્સ ધી ફિઝિકલ ઇન્દ્રિયસ બાય ફિઝિકલ ઓસ્ટિરિટીઝ એન્ડ ધેન ઇવન આફ્ટર ધી ફિઝિકલ ઇન્દ્રિયઝ હેવ બીન કંટ્રોલ્ડ if he still firmly observes the niyams of the five religious vows then the antahkaran can be controlled by controlling the physical indriyas so the physical indriyas cannot be controlled by controlling the antahkaran alone however the antahkaran cannot be controlled by controlling the physical indriyas how is that well if one controls the physical indriyas and does not let them indulge in the 
सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशंस विषयस देन द अंतकरण विधीन वुड बिकम फ्रस्ट्रेटेड एंड वुड थिंक दैट दिस टाइप ऑफ एन्जॉयमेंट इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी पॉसिबल इन दिस लाइफ एंड दैट दैट इज हाउ इट वुड बी कंट्रोल्ड यू वांट मी टू गो इन मोर डिटेल देयर और एवरीबॉडी गॉट इट बट देन ख्याल आयो वेरी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड okay so now bhagwan says the question is you know that can the outer senses outer senses means eyes nose etc if we control them to control our inner mind hmm? somebody has a habit of let's say talking bad you know hmm? then they say that i'm going to cut off my tongue so no tongue now my mind is going to be okay is it possible no no, no. somebody has problem seeing with the eyes bad things hmm kok ne aankh se jovanu kharab jovanu gamtu hoy man thai gyu hoy ek ek aankh phodi nakhu be hmm be aankh phodi nakhe somebody you know damage is both eyes you know would the mind become pure no so bhagwan kahe che ke antahkaran na indriyo na control thi antahkaran control na thatu by controlling the senses our mind normally would not get controlled but if we positively control the senses by properly training them then the mind will control if we tell our senses that okay i don't want to see anything bad i don't want to talk anything bad i don't want to hear anything bad then eventually our mind will get control but merely by punishing our senses it is not possible to control there have been examples in the history people have done that and some have been successful also you know surdas was one you know in our scripture you know that he put hot iron rod you know in his eyes so that eyes will not see anything you know but then he totally focused on lord krishna and he became very famous you know so it is maybe not 100% but you know 80 90% possible that you can do that but not everybody can do that you know so the question is that by controlling the senses can you control the mind or by controlling the mind can you control the senses if you tell your mind you know that i'm not going to talk bad or i'm not going to see bad or i'm going to hear bad un koi nu kharab jovano nahi bolvan nahi sambhalvano nahi un man ma thi nakki kariye तो अपनी आँख ने बढ़ू जो सांभ बंद कर सो सवाल कदाच थाय ना भी थाय गेरंटी नहीं कि थाय देर इज नो गेरंटी देर इट वुड हेपन सो भगवान इज सेंग के बाह्य इंद्रिओ ने देह दमने कर जीते फर्स्ट स्टेप दैट दी आउटर सेंसिस मस्ट बी कंट्रोल बाय सर्टन ऑस्टेरिटीज सर्टन प्रोसिजर्स नो के रीतनी तो आँख ने बंद राखे तो जो ओछू थाय कान ने बंद राखे तो सांभवा ओछू थाय यू ब्लॉक योर आईज यू यू ब्लॉक योर इयर्स देट वे यू विल नॉट बी hearing or seeing things from the outside you know ane deh damane karine bahya indriyo jitani hoy and then by this process if somebody has mastered to control the outer senses to pan panch vartmana niyam ma drad thai ne rehto hoy even though he thinks that he has control the senses he should follow the command given by god of five vows and don't give up on that don't 
be loose on that. So, both ways, you know, one's own effort and the command of God and the saint. Bhagavan na, je niyamo apela se, yamo drad thai nere to hoi, to bahya indriyo jitve karine antah karan jitai. So, by these two techniques, the inner body can be controlled. But ekle antah karane jitve karine bahya indriyo jitai ne. But by only controlling the inner body, one can say, okay, I can drink, you know, liquor and other things. And I have a strong mind, you know, that I will not get drunk. It's not possible. Forget it. Because it's going to do the job. Somebody say, I'm going to eat But I don't like it, you know. But the moment you taste the poison, you know, you are going to die, you know, you are going to pay the price. So, andar no antah karan kya tu hoi ke mana kai madho nahi aave, paan, bahar ni vastu ni asar thai thai ne, thai aj. Ane bahe indriyo ne jitwe kari ne to antah karan jita aj. But if we control the outer senses, then eventually our mind will be in control. The only problem is that if you take this command given by the God, it would be faster, it would be easier, and you would have the grace of God showered on you. So that is the positive thing, you know, that we don't want to be overconfident and say, okay, I can close my eyes and I can control the world. No, you have to do both. કેમ જે એ જો બાહ્ય ઇન્દ્રિયોને ન જીતે અને વિષયમાં પ્રવર્તવાદે નહીં જો અને જો બાહ્ય ઇન્દ્રિયોને જીતે અને વિષયમાં પ્રવર્તવાદે નહીં ત્યારે અંતઃકરણ મોહલી કોરેથી નિરાશ થઈ જાય છે દેન ધી માઇન્ડ ફ્રોમ વિધિન બિકમ્સ ટાયર્ડ નો હે ડિઝાયર્સ આર નોટ ગોઈંગ ટુ બી ફુલફિલ્ડ સેઇંગ ધેટ આઈ એમ નોટ ગોઈંગ ટુ આઈ એમ એ સાધુ એન્ડ ઇફ આઈ વોન્ટ ટુ You know, have worldly enjoyment is not going to happen. I am a sadhu. So, eventually, his mind will be under control. And he would become under the control of his mind and the senses. He says that, Bahiya indriyo ne jite ane vishai mo pravartva de ni, Tiyare antah karan mohali kore thi niras thai jai chhe. Then inner body gets upset and and gives gives up you know all the desires. कि आप देह करें तो आवाज बनवानी नथी. By by remaining as a sadhu, I am not going to able to have those worldly things that I am dreaming of, thinking of you know. So eventually mind becomes then cooperative and and becomes you know uh, not interested in that. In this, Swaminarayan Bhagavan is giving one signal, you know, that if you have a choice, that you want to first control your inner sense versus outer sense. Tamare andar thi vichara vek mare andar thi manne jitu chhe ke bahani indriyo ne pehli jitvi chhe. To bahani indriyo ne jitwani sharuat pehli kar jo. Bhagavan is giving that signal. Bahani indriyo ne jitwani chalu kar sho, to dhire dhire tamaru antah karan. जीता से अंतकरण में तब खाली खोटा शेख चलली विचारों कर सो कि आम करीश करीश ने आम थे ने थे तो फरगेट इट तो नहीं थे सो भगवान इज गिविंग देट प्रेक्टिकल अप्रोच अने जे बदा साधु बनया प्रेक्टिस् आगे सारा सारा गुणों प्राप्त करे अने आपड़े गुरुहस्ती हैं ये तो अपन जो साधुना गुणों आपड़े भी ग्रहण करिए तो आपन ने इतनो फायदों इवन दो वी आर ए हाउसहोल्डर एंड दी रिनाउंसियंस हु हैव बीन प्रैक्टिसिंग दिस हैव मास्टर्ड दोस टेक्निक्स वी कैन बीइंग इवन दी हाउसहोल्डर एटलिस्ट पिक अप वन और टू गुड प्रैक्टिस � 
ए लॉट ऑफ हेड वे यू नो कई कहीं सारू कई कर सत्संग ने अर्थे तो बीजे जन्मे भी पास कई चांस आपे दरक ने जे कहीं प्रकृति है पड़ी है ये एक दिवस काढ़वा तो है वन डे वी हेव टू गीव अप अवर बेड हेबिट्स एंड क्रूड नेचर सो क्या जल्दी जटली क्य कड़वी अपना उपर से पे जल्दी था या चालू पड़ी जाए કેટલા વાગ્યા ચાર હમ વી હેવ ટાઈમ એનો ત્યાં એથી પાંચ વાગે નીકળે તો વાંધો નથી ને રાઈટ હા પૂરું કરીએ આટલું ને સો દેર ઇઝ અ લાસ્ટ ક્વેશ્ચન નાઉ એનીબડી હેઝ એનીથિંગ ટુ ટોક અબાઉટ બિફોર વોટ વી ટોક
Okay. Ah, has been? How many hearing that bird talking? Raise your hand. Tamil bhi samara tu tu. Bolta tha tu bhi samara tu tu. Oh? Main jab na saval pucho pachi samara hui hai. Pani pehla nahi samara hui hai. Hamara samara hui hai na? Hapan jar tam vaat karta tha tiyare. Tiyare bhi bolto tu. Tam ne samara hui tu? Tam bolta tha tiyare? Huh? Eh? Tell to somebody. Bolo, that the Maru Manche, the Mariacoche, the Marijib Shabadi, Bolovamo, Ekagratije. It let our canchene, Kula Hotel Sambraini. Pelo Bolto Hone, a Kula Hotel Sambraini. M. Jareta Megare Vastaho. देखो तुम्हारा मोड़ू बंद होए, आँख खुली होए, कान खुला होए, कान खुला होए लेपे लो टीवी नू समराए, अने पासु टीवी नू सारू म्यूजिक वारू होए, अने मीठा आवाज़ वारू होए लेवे दर जान जाए, पर तम्मे ते वक़्ते मोड़ू बंद रखवाने बदले जे वाचो अच्छो and a motava de machuanu chalukoro. Eh? Tamejare, eh? K. Macho, eh? To TV no avachena got a double of a jacar in a tamebol one chalukoro. Con bija con distant. Con jutu his TV. Am a disturb kitty, the Masari was so much as I am a disturb soil. Tamen the key pelaus coros wait little problems. Problem tomorrow is a problem TV no sir. Ma par tamne aju samjha nahi tamara problem shoes ko. Main tamne shoe problem ko tamara problem shoes. Na na, main to ye baat karit na thi. Main ye baat kahi kari. Na na, ye tamne tamaro problem tamari tamaru tamaru ghutiya karo shoe. Main tamne bijo problem ko. Main tam samjha hi nahi. Main khabar is tamne samjha. Na? ये बदु तमारु भागवत कौश हो मैं कह रही हूँ तो मैं जो पकड़ी हूँ तो थी हम कौश हो मैं कह रही हूँ पकड़ी हूँ तो मैं ये वो लोबो जो अपना भाई हाँ के ना के हो है ना बल्कि कहीं मत नहीं लोबो जो आप उसे तो है मैं तमने शुरू कह रही हूँ कि तमे टीवी ना आवाज़ करता डबल आवाज़ है वहाँ चो म� कि पहला डिस्टर्ब था इस तमे वो कहूँ ना तमे वो मानो शो के तमे जी माचो शो है ना थी पहला डिस्टर्ब नहीं था तमे आरु तमारु लो शो ये वधारे पहला करता टीवी करता तमे वधारे सारु माचो आना शो तमने वो विश्वास शे तो तमे पहले तो बात करता ना थी अत्यार सुधी तुम कहूँ सुधा सुधी बोलता न समझे हम शुक्र वाम आगुस, शुक्र वाम आगुस अब कौन तम्हें, हैं? अजूबी नहीं समझे, फरीद ही समझाओ, तम्हें जे वाचो छो, जे तम्हें सत्संग नू वाचो छो, एमो तम्हें विश्वास छे के तम्हें जे वाचो छो ये पहला टीवी करता सारु वाचो छो, एमो सारी वस्तु छे, तम्हें विश्वास छे खरे खर विश्वास है, खरे खर विश्वास है, तो विश्वास हो है तो तुमने वो विचार ना आवे के पहला डिस्टर्ब था से, पहला ने 
તમે સાચું સમજાવવા માટે મોટેથી વાંચો છો એવો તમને વિચાર આવશે ખ્યાલ આવ્યો તમને શું કહું છું પણ હજુ તમારા મનમાં એ ફિટ નહીં થાય જ્યારે તમારો ટીવી ચાલશે ને ત્યારે તમને પાછું આનું જ ચાલવાનું કારણ કે તમારી અંદરની અંદરની જે કસેટ છે ને એ હજુ પાકી થવી નથી નથી થઈ એટલે નહીં તો તમે મોટા અવાજે એ શાંતિથી એને સંભળાય એવું મોટા અવાજે તમે જ વાંચવાનું ચાલુ કરી દો અને તમારું એવું મીઠાશવારું હોવું જોઈએ કે એને એમ થાય કે ના બા તમે વાંચો છો એ વધારે સારું પેલો ટીવી હું બંધ કરી દઉં એને મનમાં એવું થાય પણ એકના એક દિવસ એવું નહીં જોતા કે આજે ને આજે થઈ જવું જોઈએ હે હે થોડી ધીરજ રાખવી પડશે પણ પ્રેમથી વાંચવાનું મોટા અવાજે વાંચવાનું પહેલાંને ગમે એવું વાંચવાનું અને એવી તૈયારી બી રાખવાની કે છણકો કરે તો બી આપણે દુઃખી નહીં થવાનું હે તો તો સારું પણ એટલા બધા અનુકૂળ નહીં થવાનું કે પછી તમારું વાંચવામાંથી ટીવીમાં મન જતું રહે હે કે સારું ભાઈ આ તો હવે પછી વાંચીશું અત્યારે તો જોઈ લઈએ ટીવી હા એટલે એવું જ થાય છે મને ખબર છે એટલે ટીવી જોવાનો તમને બી ગમે છે ના ના આપવો પડે છે એનું કારણ કે એ ગમે છે રાઈટ એટલે હમણાં ખીચડો થયો છે સમજણનો ખીચડો છે યા પણ જ્યારે પાક્કું નક્કી થાય કે ભાઈ મારે આ સરસ છે મારે આ વાંચવું છે મને આ ગમે છે અને મારા છોકરાઓ અને છોકરાના છોકરાઓ અને મારી ઘઉ વહુ બધાને બી આમાંથી ફાયદો થશે તો આમાં ધ્યાન રાખીને તમે મોટે અવાજે ડબલ અવાજે વાંચો તો ધીરે ધીરે પહેલાંને આ ગમતું થાય હે આપણે એમાં ખેંચાઈ ના જઈએ પણ એ આપણામાં ખેંચાયું તો કામ થાય આ એક ઉપાય બતાવ્યો બીજો ઉપાય કે ટીવી જે રૂમમાં ચાલતો હોય એ રૂમમાંથી વાંચવાનું મંદિર આપણે ટીવી રૂમમાં બનાવ્યું છે હે એટલે ભગવાન બી આપણી પરીક્ષા કરવા માટે ત્યાં ટીવી મૂકતો હોય એનો હે કે ભાઈ તને શું ગમે છે હે અને તને ગમતું હોય તો મારે ડિસ્ટર્બ કરવું નથી હે એક જન્મ બે જન્મ દસ જન્મ સો જન્મ લઈ જાય ને ભાઈ કંઈ વાંધો નથી હે હે ના ના પણ એ જાણે ને કે તમારે નથી કરવો તમારે તો આ જોવું છે પાછું ફરી આવતા જન્મે બી જોવું છે બીજા જન્મે બી જોવું છે એનો હે શું ઉતાવળ છે આપણે હે તો ભગવાન બી આપે ફેસિલિટી સારું શાંતિથી આનંદ કરો ભાઈ હે હે પહેલાં પૈસા ખર્ચીને ટિકિટો લેવા જઈએ ને હવે મફતમાં ટિકિટો આપે હે શાહરૂખ ખાનની કે ભાઈ એમને માવો હે પણ શિક્ષા પત્ર શાહરૂખ ખાન જોવા નહીં જવું એવું નથી લખ્યું ભોણ ભવે જોવા નહીં જવાનું પણ શાહરૂખ ખાન જોવા જવાય છે એમાં લખ્યું નથી ભાઈ શિક્ષા પત્ર નથી લખ્યું એટલે ના એટલો બધો જ ખરાબ નથી હા એટલે બીજો શું ઉપાય કયો હસુબેન જ્યાં ટીવી ને બધું ચાલતું હોય ત્યાંથી બીજે જઈને જો ના સંભળાય ત્યાં જઈને પણ પેલા પગ ઊભા જ ના થાય ને કે આ તો ગમે છે આમાં બેસી રહો ને સાંભળો આમ શું વાંધો સારો ટીવી ચાલે છે જ્યારે ટીવી બંધ થશે પછી એવી બધી પશ્ચાતાપ રૂપી પ્રાર્થનાઓ કરીશું ખોટું હતું ને આ છે ને નહોતું જોવા જેવું છતાં જોયું ને આમ છે ને તેમ છે પછી ડાપણ કરીશું બધું પાછું પણ અમે તો જોઈ લઈએ તો કામ ના થાય બીજો ઉપાય શું કયો બીજી રૂમમાં જવું 
અને બીજી રૂમમાં જવા છતાં હોય જો અવાજ આવતો હોય ડિસ્ટર્બ થતું હોય તો સાસુનો પાવર વાપરવો અમેરિકામાં સાસુનું ચાલે એવું નથી ના ચાલે પ્રેમથી વાત કરવી કે હમણાં ભાઈ મારું આ ભજન ભક્તિનું ચાલે છે ત્યાં સુધી તું હમણાં ટીવી બંધ રાખ અને તારે જોવું હોય તો પેલા એની કસેટ બનાવી દે કે એની જે શું કહે છે એને રેકોર્ડિંગ કરી લે એનું પછી જોજે હમણાં મારો ટાઈમ મને ભજન કરી લેવા દઈ તો થાય એ બી છે અત્યારે તો સાધનો છે તમારે પેલો હેડસેટ લગાવી દેવાનો તમને દીકરો હેડસેટ લાવી આપે તમને બધું ભેગું ચાલે માસા ટીવી બી જોવાનો માળા બી કરવાની આપણે કેટલા સિરિયસ છે એની ઉપર છે આપણે કેટલું ખરેખર કરવું છે કે ખરેખર નથી કરવું એની ઉપર છે અને તમે ખરેખર જો અંતરના ઉડાણથી દિલની સચ્ચાઈથી પ્રાર્થના કરો ને તો ટીવીનો ફ્યુઝ ઉડી જાય શું થઈ ગયું ખબર પડે પછી નહીં ઓકે વી હેવ લાસ્ટ ક્વેશ્ચન અગેન સિન્સ ઓકે આફ્ટર ધીસ શ્રીજી મહારાજ આસ્ટ બાય વોટ મીન્સ આર ધી ફિઝિકલ ઇન્દ્રિયસ કંટ્રોલ્ડ એન્ડ બાય વોટ મીન્સ ધી અંતઃકરણ કંટ્રોલ્ડ શ્રીજી મહારાજે છેલ્લો એક સવાલ પૂછ્યો બાહ્ય ઇન્દ્રિયો શાણે કરીને જીતાય અને અંતઃકરણ શાણે કરીને જીતાય હાઉ કેન વન કંટ્રોલ ધી આઉટર સેન્સીસ એન્ડ હાઉ વન કેન કંટ્રોલ ધી ઇનર સેન્સીસ પછી એનો ઉત્તર પણ પરમહંસને ન થયો આવડ્યો ત્યારે શ્રીજી મહારાજે કર્યો જે ધર્મશાસ્ત્રમાં કયા જે ત્યાગીના નિયમ તેને રાખે ઓલ ધી સ્ક્રિપ્ચર્સ દે હેવ એક્સપ્લેન ધી vows for the renouncings those who have become the saints they have to follow those rules according to the scriptures tatha aahar ne niyam ma rakhe also renouncing should control the food habit we normally eat 3 or 4 5 times a day renouncings eat only once a day ek j vakhat khay sadhu hoy ek j vakhat jame divas ma apne samanya te 4 5 vakhat jamta hiye pan sadhu hoy ek j vakhat jame ane e bhi pet bhari ne na jame even that he would not fill up the stomach they would not have any problem of joining the exercise rooms the health clubs right tatha tapta kruch chandrayan adik vrat kare there are different pinans in the scriptures to control different senses 
वन इज कॉल तप्त क्रुच्छ तप्त मीन्स पुटिंग द फायर अराउंड फाइव साइड्स फोर साइड्स एंड वन वेर द पर्सन इज सिटिंग एंड द सिक्स वन इज फ्रॉम द स्काय द सन normally they don't put the one underneath you know but four side and the one from the sun and sweat their bodies you know and that's how they lose their weight and that's how they control their the heat and cold senses you know eva shastra mo vrat batavel those are the uh pinans explain in the scriptures then chandrayan there is a pinans of moon cycle that on the full moon day you eat 15 times you know put 15 times in the mouth you know how many times when we eat on one sitting on table how many times we feed in our mouth anybody has counted apne kitli vakat mada mon akhiye jamiye tar dame count kar jo would be more than 50 you know maybe 60 70 80 you know but this pinans is that you count only 15 times you know you put only 15 count on the full moon day and nothing else for the whole day then the next day you count 14 times one less the next day 13 12 11 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 1 3 2 one, right so on the new moon day zero you don't eat anything then on the another day add one more 2 3 4 5 to 15 so you go in the cycle of 15 and 15 and 15 and 15 you know that is called chandrayan vrat you know and you lose weight also and there are so many different also you know lord buddha you know he practiced those things that he would start out with one fistful of grain you know rice today next day he would take one fistful minus one grain bije divase ek muthi mathi ek dano kadi nakhvano tije divase muthi mathi be dana kadvana chothe divase char karta 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 zero and then start counting again and his body was so weak that he was falling down he was tumbling down you know but his mind became stronger it was not that he was not able to get the food ene khavanu natu madtu nata khata evu natu ये भिखारी कहवा जैसे खावा ना मे मन में टरवरे दुखी थी जाए ये भिखारी कहवा फायदो ना थे जो एट ना थे पर जैसे मलत तू ए हामिद थी छोड़ी ने एक एक ओछू कर कंट्रोल करने ट्राई कर माइंड पॉवरफुल बनी गय पी एमने ज्ञान थूनों बुद्धिसत्व ही हेड देट यू नो रियलाइजेशन यू नो बट this is something one is doing out of his own thinking own program own planning that i want to do this you know that makes the difference and then in a fair pade ke tame nakki karo mare atlu karvu ch to tamne andar thi evi manobal ni ichhao ne badu divya thatu jaye saru thatu jaye ele bhagwan shu ke che 
जो वॉट इज द क्वेश्चन दैट बाह्य इंद्रिओ शाणे कर जीता है हाउ दी आउटर सेंसिज कैन बी वन सो स्वामी भगवान इज एंसरिंग फर्स्ट the renunciant should follow these vows according to these religious scriptures and he should keep the food in control then he should do all this penance tapta kruchya chandrayan adik vrat and he should knowingly bear with the cold with the heat with the thirst with the hunger knowingly he should bear with it jani jani ne taad tadko bhook taras tenu sahan kare ane bhagwan na katha kirtan varta kare and this is this is all controlling side that swami bhagwan explained first not doing not doing not doing now doing so what is the doing then that one should have the discourse of the god read or listen to the discourse of the god talk about god do the singing bhajan of god and sit at one posture for a long enough time to control that posture and by all this means the outer senses can be controlled there are so many others also you know but bhagwan is giving some example ke tame atlu karo to tamari indriyo bahya indriyo jitai your outer senses can be controlled by these different means how about the inner senses now ane bhagwan na mahatma no vichar ane bhagwan nu dhyan tatha atmanishtha etle karine antah karan jitai che so if we want to control our inner mind then we want to think the greatness of god magnanimity of god meditation of god and going beyond the body consciousness that i am not the body but i am soul if one does practice this then their inner body gets controlled your your inner body gets inspiration to control from within so these are the techniques that swami ram bhagwan gave in this vachnamrut iti vachnamrutam sajanan swami maharaj ni jay okay anybody any question on that before we stop Asuba. Asuba. Was it was it about the the uh, discourse? About the discourse. Discourse. Uh, what we were talking about. Mm-hmm. In what reference to the discourse? No. What, what was the topic? We were talking about Asuba. What we were talking about Asuba? Because God is talking through you that she is still not understanding. So we'll talk again. Good idea. Okay. She was saying that at her home, she has uh, 